Hello and welcome to our How to Create a Podcast training. Before we start, I'd like to thank iSpring and iSpring Suite 8. I'm using something called the Video Lecture Player. It's a great new feature of iSpring and it's a lot of fun to work with. So it takes my PowerPoint and creates training out of it. Thank you, iSpring at www.ispringsolutions.com. Take a look at the product. I think you'll enjoy it. Now, before we start, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been doing podcasting for over seven years. We have had probably close to a million views on both YouTube and Vimeo. We've had many different internet broadcast shows. We've done some audio podcasting as well as a lot of video. And it's a lot of fun. My background is 20 years in the multimedia development arena, including e-learning, as well as about 20 years in the IT world. So we bring a lot of background to what we do. And you can take a look at our podcasts on YouTube, or you could also go to Vimeo and take a look there. A lot of channels, a lot of content for you to look at, and a lot of fresh content every week. Now, there are two types of podcasts. The first one is an audio podcast. That is where the, ter- where the term podcast first came up. Audio podcasts are what podcasts are. But then it got expanded, and we now have video broadcasts or vidcasts. Well, people call it video podcasting as well. Video podcasting currently is probably more popular than audio podcasting, but they're both very, very popular. So which type of podcast is right for you? Well, it's really going to depend on your budget. How much do you want to spend? How much is available to you? That will determine the kind of podcast you create. You can start very small with very little investment, or you can spend a lot of money like we have to create a whole studio and buy a lot of gear and equipment. It's up to you. Part of what determines how much you want to spend is what your audience outreach is. Do you want to get a small niche audience or do you want a large audience that covers the world? That will determine how much you probably spend or invest in making your podcasts professional. Now, there are many different kinds of distribution routes you can take to make your podcasts. You can go with online video like we have with YouTube and Vimeo. There are many video hosting services. You can also do blogs. A lot of people embed their audio or videos into blogs and they don't really host anywhere else. Um, Email. People send out email podcasts and uh, you always have online audio podcasts. Again, many different ways you can go as far as sending out your podcasts. What you do with that podcast really determines how well that podcast will get out there and how well it will be considered successful. Viewers are one reason podcasts become successful, but there are others like, for example, revenue, ad revenues, things like that. Okay, let's start with what do you need for an audio podcast? Now, this is a pretty simple one. The first thing you're going to need is a microphone and probably a headset. Now, there are USB microphones. They can go directly into your laptop or computer, and that may be all you need. But sometimes if you have a more complex type microphone or it's an XLR microphone, those are microphones that have a little three-pong connector, you will need a preamplifier. The preamplifier will take the signal from the microphone and bring it into the computer. Now, there are many kinds of preamplifiers at many different budget levels. What you want, again, will be determined by how much you're willing to invest. One of the ones I recommend is the Presonus Audio Box. That allows up to two inputs, and they have one that allows up to, I believe, 18 inputs. Uh, We have both. We've used them in different studios, and they work very well. The two-input one is great because you can take it anywhere you go. It's not very large, and you can podcast on the road. Then there's another simple little device called a Shure X2U, XLR2 USB. And that's if you have very nice microphones with XLR connectors, but you don't have any power to get them into a PC. Well, that's a perfect way to get it right into the PC with one small device. Now, I have to warn you, I have been stopped at airports for carrying it. They think it's a weapon. 
It is not. It's a microphone converter. Uh, and third, which I don't have listed here, would be USB microphones, which go directly into the computer. They have their own built-in preamplifier. Sure, S-H-U-R-E makes some very good uh, USB microphones, as does Samsung and many others. So you have a lot of choices there on what kind of microphones you could have. So what if you're doing a video broadcast? Now video introduces a lot more complexity. Well, one thing you're going to need for sure is you'll need a video workstation, whether it's PC or Mac. Uh, and a video workstation means you need a faster machine. I probably wouldn't do any video broadcasting with anything under an i7 chip to, for speed, because the i5s could do it, but it may not be fast enough. Video and audio take up a lot of resources, and when we get into switching software, you're going to need some fast machines in order to do a very good job. So video broadcasting in and of itself can cost more. Now, if you're only doing something, something simple like going on a YouTube Hangout, well, then you, all you need is a microphone and a webcam. But we'll talk about that later. So what else do you need? Well, you need a preamplifier. And to the preamplifier, you will have a microphone connected. Remember, if you have a USB microphone, you can go directly into the computer without needing any kind of preamplifier. Most of us have professional microphones, so as a result, we tend to use preamplifiers that then go into the computer. So these are either FireWire or USB preamplifiers. Now, the other thing you will need is a webcam, like I'm using right now. The Logitech C930 is the one I'm on right now. Maybe it's a C935. Um, uh, the Logitech C910, the C920, those are very good. Microsoft makes webcams, they're okay. Uh, I think Logitech makes the best ones I've seen in the industry. Or you could use a camcorder, a professional camcorder, or maybe even a DSLR. But then you're going to need capture cards like Blackmagic Design Intensity Pro, Intensity Pro Extreme, DeckLink Duo, all sorts of different cards to bring in your video signals. And the video signal can either be from HDMI sources on the cameras, or if you have professional broadcast cameras like we do, you will need SDI connectors, serial digital interface. They're like mini coax cables, and those will go directly into these capture cards on your PC. If you're paying attention, you're probably thinking, this is going to get expensive, and it could. A really good PC will cost you somewhere between probably two and $8,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, a Mac will cost you probably about 3500 for a really fast one if you get an iMac. You could use a MacBook Pro if you want to do a laptop. That'll cost you about 2500 to 3000 as well. Get the video capture cards. You're looking at 500 to 1000 Get microphones, probably 200 up to 1000 Preamplifiers, 200 up to about 1000 You can add up a lot of money on video broadcasting. Another thing you're going to need are probably something like Mac Minis, a lot of notebooks, or other smaller machines that we use strictly as what we call Skype machines. You're going to need LED lights as well, or some kind of lighting, because otherwise you're not going to look okay, good. Okay, what are some of the brands and of microphones finally, that you you're may want to look Skype. at? Well, there's quite Even a few. Even though not everybody I loves Skype, Skype is about a great tool. Here. Skype allows now, us these, to do many video some of my interviews. If you're not Rode, a video interview it's an Australian program, company, you probably they don't make very Skype. good. But if you are, even microphones, if you're doing audio interviews, they have invested Skype is a good way to go to recording the audio, audio stream that makes into their your live uh, sessions. If you're going to be handmade, handmade is great. But now frankly, going back a little bit to I'll the with Mac very Mini well part of this, if you uh, have Mac Mini, because what they are are individual and the best sounds. That's All the only the thing we run on these. The guy's having a bad and day when he's having a bad day. You may not get as good a video sound signal um, from the Mac Mini into microphones. our own video switching um, software. I also like more on that. They make very good dynamic um, microphones. We have um, currently in our studio as well as four Mac Minis, we audio so we can do up four inputs. Uh, I'm using an AKG headphone right now. Okay, what are some of the brands of microphones that you may want to look at? Well, there's quite a few. I've highlighted about nine of them here. Now of these, some of my favorites are Rode. It's an Australian company. They make very good, consistent microphones. They have invested a fortune in manufacturing technology that makes their microphones consistent. They're not handmade. Handmade is great, but frankly, 
I'll go with very well done manufactured uh, microphones because you're going to get the best quality and the best sound all the time. If the guy's having a bad day when he's hand making it, you may not get as good a sound. Um, we do have Neumann microphones. Um, I also like Electrovoice. They make very good dynamic microphones um, as well as others. We use Audio Technica. Uh, I'm using an AKG headphone right now. Uh, and Sennheiser. We use Sennheiser lavaliers a lot as well as Shure microphones and others. There's a lot of good mics out there. Find one that you like that fits your voice. That's very key because not all microphones will sound great for your voice. So find one that makes your voice sound good. Now, where do you purchase all this gear? Whether it's video or microphone gear. Well, here's some places that you can go to. You probably know some of these. Uh, Amazon has everything. So if you want to good thing and they have a good return policy so if you buy a mic you don't like you can return it they're very good at that kind of of return swap easy to work with uh, you can also look at um, places like B&H B&H photo video and audio does a great job of providing you with everything you could ever want for a podcast <coughs> and then again Sweetwater BSW all very good sources to buy your gear we live near Los Angeles, and I go to Sammy's Camera a lot. They have a lot of video and audio gear, and I love the service I get there. One of the things you're going to need if you're doing a video broadcast is video switching software. Now, we currently use vMix from Australia. Great software for video switching, very reasonably priced, does a very good job. We also use Wirecast by Telestream. <coughs> Excuse me. And Telestream does a great job of creating very simple, easy to use, and yet very powerful professional streaming and recording software. All of the record all of the software we're showing right here or talking about will record, will stream live, and can also do other things as needed. Then we've got VidBlaster, another very popular video switching software that does a very good job, again, of recording shows. All of these give you very good customization capabilities. You can have just a lot of inputs, uh, meeting cameras, recording, mics. They do a good job. Um, the big 3,000 pound gorilla is NewTek and the TriCaster. These are very large, well, they don't have to be large, some of them are smaller, but they're very professional, large scale broadcast systems. Everybody wants one. We used to have one. We actually sold it. Um, it is more work and it's a little harder than the other systems I've delineated here. And that's because there's a lot more work to it. They're very professional. You can do very good results with a TriCaster, but it's jumping to the next level that may or may not be something you need. In our case, we decided we didn't need it, but some people love it. It's up to you. But all of these uh, are pretty reasonably priced. TriCaster will be uh, an investment. I think we spent 25000 on our TriCaster. Um, we can spend about 800 on top of the line vMix software and about 1000 on Telestream. So how much do you want to spend? That's your decision, and you'll do with it as you will. But if you do want to buy a TriCaster, go for it. It's a nice machine. They do everything you pretty much want it to do, and it, it gets better every year. There are some free solutions, but we'll talk about those later. Social media. What is the role of social media in your podcasting? Well, it's actually a very big role. Make sure you have your Twitter, your Facebook, your Pinterest accounts, your LinkedIn, your Google Plus, and many, many more. You can put your videos wherever you'd like, or your audio files. And the good thing about this is this is how you get the word out. There's also the organic part where people just find your podcast. So make sure when you create your podcast and you put them out for publish, that you tag everything correctly. Now, tagging means you meta tag it. You put tags to describe what's in your podcast. And make sure you put a lot of tags in there, because otherwise nobody might find you. Tagging alone might bring you a lot more viewers than social media, but definitely don't shirk your social media responsibilities. That is a very good way to get your audience created quickly and get good audience to boot. Now, 
if you do a lot of social media and you do a lot of shows and you want to make sure people don't miss episodes of what you're doing, Get something like Hootsuite. There are other programs too, but Hootsuite is a good one, which allows you to do social media automation. That means you can schedule all your shows at different times uh, or when they're sent out to the social media sites. It's a very valuable tool and can make your uh, popularity, if you will, rise a lot more quickly. Hootsuite, not very expensive at all. Take a look at it. All right, getting guests, that is the bane of all of our existences. Getting guests is not as easy as you might think. It's not hard, but it's not easy. You have to spend time inviting them. You've got to communicate. You've got to make sure that they're comfortable coming onto your shows, that you're providing them something that they feel they'll get value out of. In most podcast case, we don't charge the guests for coming on, nor do they charge us. It's a copacetic relationship. It's symbiotic. By them coming on, they get free marketing. By them coming on our shows, we get free publicity. It works well. Everybody benefits. Most people love coming on shows, any kind of show. People like getting out there. People like being recognized for being good at what they do or knowing something that maybe somebody else doesn't. So invite your guests carefully. Invite guests that are good. Invite guests that want to come on. Don't force a guest on. They'll probably not be a very good guest. But when you do invite guests, make sure you do a lot of follow-ups. And for that, you'll probably need something like Google Calendar. There are many calendaring resources out there. You could do it with Exchange, but Exchange doesn't have a very good way to notify people afterwards. With Google Calendar, we can have multiple users constantly get emails for the shows that that are coming up, the shows that they're on, as well as for our internal staff or your internal staff, you'll know who's coming on when, what time these shows are, and you can get everybody together that needs to be there when that show is on. So remember, Google Calendar is free, and you get the ability to send out a lot of pre-notices. We send out notices a week before, one day before, and several hours before that guest is to appear on a podcast. By doing that, you remove the possibility of them not showing up or forgetting. So the more you remind them, the better off you'll be. But just in case, make sure you have a backup plan. Some guests are plain flaky and they won't show up. Our policy is if guests flake out, we don't invite them anymore because our time and their time is valuable. We decide who comes on, who doesn't. Make sure you have a backup plan. Make sure you know that if your guest can't come on, you either have a backup guest or you're ready to talk with either your co-host or by yourself on anything you want to talk about. But backup plans are important because guests, for whatever reason, either have emergencies, have to reschedule, or forget. Forgetting is a bad one, by the way. Have that backup plan because you never know when you'll need it. Let's talk a little bit about Skype. Skype comes in two different formats on Windows. You have the desktop version and you have an app which looks more like the Metro interface or more like the Win 10 tiles which are like a mini Metro interface. The app works okay but is not as easy to use and people get confused with it a lot more quickly. The app also may get updated when you don't want it to. You have much more control over the desktop version for us, we find it works better. It's a lot cleaner, a lot easier to work with. People complain about Skype all the time. It's not really Skype's problem. Skype works very, very well. Think of how many people are on the internet and how many people are Skyping. Millions. Sometimes you'll get bandwidth issues. Sometimes you'll have bandwidth issues in your offices, in your home. Your guests may have bandwidth issues. That may cause Skype to look like it's not that good. It's usually your internet provider. All right. Congestion if on you the want internet, some more information on podcasting and also internet, a chance to look at some all of, of our that shows, cause Skype to come to www.relatedcasts.com. And so there you'll find information on not only on our shows, but we have a section on for guests, a second, which tells the guests get out of sync, but not how to prepare for uh, a show, how to get the very best out of a show, and how to there use are Skype, professional like versions that. of Skype coming. Take a look at the website, which, take a look at that, it might help you out. They may help to have better video and audio in the future. There are 
three vendors providing a very high level of Skype, but it's a cheap. It's it's not a cheap solution. It's about three to four thousand dollars per user. So if you're a video broadcaster professional in a, in a, a TV channel, maybe that's okay. For most of us, that's a lot of money to have a guest on, and Skype does a very good job all by itself. All right. If you want some more information on podcasting and also a chance to look at some of our shows, come to www.relatecasts.com. There you'll find information not only on our shows, but we have a section on guests, which tells the guest how to prepare for a show, how to get the best out of a show, how to use Skype, things like that. Take a look at the website. Take a look at that. It might help you out on your podcast. I'm glad you could come today. Again, my name is Rick Zanotti. I'm with Relay Corporation at www.relate.com. Feel free to send me an email at connect at relate.com. That's connect, as in connecting, at relate.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.